Okay. Here we go. Okay, well, that's tips and tricks and photography and Photoshop. And uh, the first thing I want to do is thank Louise. You've all seen that beautiful worksheet that she sent out. And uh, it was nothing like the Word document that I sent her. So <laughs> thank you, Louise, for uh, really making that look beautiful. And, and also want to thank Rodney. I'm sure Rodney had a lot to do with getting everything in the background organized. So again, thank you. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take it back. Okay, well, I've never done anything like this before. No, so I, just, I hope you find it informational and okay. entertaining. And this was supposed to be a two-part program. Uh, first part kind of on psychology and philosophy of photography and the second part on uh, workflow. But I, I think uh, most of the people wanted to see workflow. So uh, that will be the big emphasis. But I still have to put in just a few items on philosophy and psychology. Uh, so uh, some of the ground rules uh, will be uh, I'll kind of like talk for 45 minutes uh, uh, with, you know, I won't answer any questions. Uh, and then we'll take a, a 10 minute break for questions and then have, let's say, a five minute break and then start again on the second part. OK, so I, I think on this uh, first photo, you see me uh, here in my typical position. Usually I'm photographing with uh, <laughs> my rear end on the ground. That's my favorite position. And some of you may recognize that I've got a new hat <laughs> in beige. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we're going to be talking about ideas you wish someone would have told you about years ago that would have saved you time, energy, and frustration. So I'm going to be throwing in some tips uh, along the way. And, uh, and then, as I say, we'll get into the workflow. Uh, so don't expect to learn everything in one afternoon in this afternoon because, you know, Photoshop is tricky. Uh, a lot of things are hidden. And if you don't check every box properly, Photoshop won't work. So I'm just going to try to show you a simple, easy way to edit that's repeatable with an emphasis on artistic creation. So. After a few hours of practice on your part, I'm hoping uh, you'll be able to learn how to do these things on your own. But if you're still having trouble, we're going to set up some tutoring sessions at the photo lab in Clubhouse 4. So you can bring your laptop or a thumb drive with some of your images on. I'll be there and I'll try to help you uh, either one on one or in a small group. Okay, so I want you to know uh, that I'm an old school kind of guy. Uh, a lot of my methods and techniques I've used for the last 15 years over and over and over again. And along the way, as new stuff has come in, I've kind of evaluate to see if I really like it, if it's going to improve my workflow and if it does then I integrate it in. Uh, so you can take my workflow and, and you can use it but I'm hoping when you get more experience and understanding that you're, you will create your own workflow because new things are coming out of Photoshop every other week and the key thing is you've got to make this your own, your own artistic expression. So, so that's the goal. Maybe start out with my workflow, but along the way, change it to yours. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, oh, kind of lost my flow here. Let me see where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so this is an important question that you have to ask yourself. What is your purpose in photography? 
Okay, you can do documentation, you can take pretty pictures, or you can create works of art. Okay, most of us do one and two. You know, we document our life, we take photos of our family or kids, birthday parties, soccer, kids playing soccer, or we go on cruises and we take pretty pictures. Okay, so creating works of art that has to be a conscious effort. It, it's like crossing over a bridge. On one side, you've got documentation, and on the other side of the bridge, you've got creative art. And you have to consciously make an effort to cross over that bridge. And I was really glad, you know, when I started taking the uh, photography classes with uh, Rick Graves, uh, he was talking about this a lot, about creating works of art. And he was sort of, you know, like acting as a, uh, like a football coach in a sense. You know, he would send us out emails and say, hey, good morning, creators. Or when we got to a uh, location for our photo shoot, he would give us a pep talk. And then after the pep talk, he would say, okay, get out there and create art. And, and I thought, oh man, that is just so super. I haven't heard too many teachers talk like that. And I, I've been studying this idea of creating art for like 15 years. And here's some of uh, my ideas about it. So you got this creating works of art. You've got shooting methods and styles. You've got compositional theories and concepts and you have editing skills and techniques. So let's take a look at shooting methods and styles and relate it to our instructor, Rick Graves. Rick took cameras and suction cups and put them on the sides of speeding cars and created a whole career for himself with his method and shooting styles. And he built his own motorized film camera, put about 600 feet of film in there, motorized it across a shutter that had a split in it, while zebras and wild horses <laughs> were running across the landscape. And his shooting methods and style created, you know, a, a, a whole new uh, genre for himself. You know, when he made seven foot panos using this method and style. So it was just incredible, you know. And if you look at our classes, um, the people in our classes are just doing wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, they're doing multiple exposures, exposures and focus blending, doing textures, motion planning, and just doing super wonderful abstract images. Uh, taking a look at compositional theories and concepts, that's sort of uh, my forte. And so let's take a look at one of uh, my images and talk about some of the concepts of uh, composition. Okay, this image was taken uh, during our Wednesday photography class. It was taken June the 22nd uh, at 7.49 p.m. I don't know if you remember that day. It had rained in the morning and there were just beautiful clouds in the sky. So we went down to Crystal Cove State Park, the whole class uh, with Rick Graves. And when we got down there, you know, part of uh, Rick's thing is, you know, you got to explore your environment and find out, you know, where you want to shoot. So he, marched the whole class a half a mile north up the beach. We didn't find anything there, so we walked a half a mile back. And then we walked that, so that was already a mile. Then we walked a half a mile south. So we got a mile and a half on the sand. And when I found these two rocks here, I said, that's it, I'm stopping, I'm not going any further. And uh, luckily enough, uh, most of the class decided to stop here too. Okay, so when I saw these two rocks, 
first thing I did, boom, sat down on the sand. That's my style. Okay, my view of the world is the grand landscape versus an in, uh, intimate landscape. So my walk around lens is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So I know sitting down there on the sand with an F16 F stop, I can focus on the rock right there in front and I will be in focus. Everything will be in focus from one foot in front of the rock to infinity. Okay, I'll, I also know that on F16, I'm going to get a sunburst in, in the, uh, a starburst in the sun. Okay, and then if you draw a line between the two rocks and extend it to the sun, it forms a triangle. So you have another very powerful compositional element. Uh, Okay, so I'm sitting there on the sand and I'm, my camera settings are F16 and I'm shooting at, at uh, uh, multiple exposures. So I have a minus two, zero and a plus two. And I'm shooting like every 30 seconds, I take three shots because I don't know when that sun is going to hit the edge of a cloud and create the starburst. So I'm probably took 50, 60 images. So that three images, you know, per shot. So, so that's quite a few. So every 30 seconds, I'm taking a shot. So now another compositional element here is that you have the idea of a simple composition versus a complex composition. Okay, I believe in complex compositions. So I want my image to have multiple compositions telling multiple stories. I want you to be able to look at this image a hundred times. And every time you look at it, you see something different than you saw before. Now, a lot of people believe in simple compositions. This is strictly, you know, your artistic interpretation. And, uh, but as I say, I'm a believer in complex compositions. Okay, just lost my place of my notes. So I got to take a second here to find out where I am. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, so we've talked about compositional theories and concepts. And then the uh, last topic is editing skills and techniques in Photoshop. Okay, you can't avoid learning Photoshop for editing. Mainly because if you're shooting in RAW, RAW is, is kind of a dull, lifeless uh, image. In fact, Raw is nothing more than a collection of data. And when they convert that data into an image that you can see, it's just flat and dull. And the reason for shooting in raw, basically, is that it gives you the most leeway. If you make mistakes in your exposure, uh, it gives you the most leeway to correct them. So, you know, all of our teachers in uh, Saddleback, they're all recommending that you use Photoshop and they're all recommending that you use uh, Shoot It Raw. Okay, and so you need Photoshop to bring your images to life. And Photoshop is going to help you develop your look, your signature look. And this is something, again, that Rick Graves has been talking about, developing your signature look. Okay, so let me talk for a second. How did I develop my signature look? Well, I'm sure it's pretty similar to, to what happened with you. Mine started, let's say, I think it was in the sophomore or junior year of college. I was asking my buddies, they say, hey, I need two units of something really simple and easy. And they suggested uh, that I take art history. And so, 
Uh, so I enrolled in art history, and for me, there was never a class in college that was easy. <laughs> this was a tough class. I had to study, uh, but it was one of the best classes I ever took because I kind of learned from uh, an early age that I really liked French Impressionism. I liked the painterly effect of it, but I also loved the bold colors of Van Gogh and Gauguin. And of course, like everybody else, I really liked the uh, lighting of Van uh, of Rembrandt. So back in college, I never did anything with this knowledge. It kind of just percolated in my subconscious. And then later on, I think in about night in about twenty oh five, it finally developed. I finally started using. Uh, these ideas that uh, that I learned in uh, in my college class. Okay, um, so that's kind of how I developed my personal uh, signature look. And of course, you know we're all familiar with the editing skills in Photoshop that you need. You know, things like hue saturation, vibrance, levels, curves, dodge and burn and vignetting, you know, just simple stuff. That's all you really need is just those few items, you know. Um, it, the new thing now, let's see, where are we here? <laughs> Okay, let's try. Let's go on to the next slide here. Okay, so how are the ways to create your signature look? Okay, there are profiles, presets, looks, templates, thing called Lux, which are lookup tables, and then all the Photoshop adjustments. Okay. All of these items have been in, around for a long, long time. So your profiles and presets, they're kind of uh, packaged adjustments or color uh, adjustments that give your image a look, okay? And profiles and presets are very, very similar. Uh, your profiles, again, are these directions that give you a look and it applies to the whole image and you generally can't change them. Presets, the same thing, adjustments that give your photos a look, but in presets, presets you can move the sliders around and kind of change the look. Okay, uh, program like Luminar, uh, they call theirs templates, but it's the same thing as look. And in the Hollywood motion picture, business, they use the word LUTs, which are lookup tables. And that's been around for a long, long time. And, you know, that's that look you get when you watch movies that, uh, you know, uh, that they can just change the look of a scene. I've heard that, you know, like a director can shoot a scene in daylight and then change his mind and, and want the scene in night. And he just has to go to the Photoshop people and say, hey, change that scene from daylight to night, and they can do it. And then again, as we've talked about the Photoshop adjustments uh, that are, you know, your hue saturation, your vibrance levels, curves, dodging and burning, et cetera. Okay, the key thing now that's happening is that Photoshop is just changing every other week. There's new stuff coming in. And the new stuff that's coming in is this artificial intelligence. And it's just great, great stuff. Uh, as I say, every other week it's coming in. And being that I'm old school, it takes me a long time before I get to use it. So I've looked at some of this stuff and I haven't integrated it into my workflow yet, uh, but I need to bring you aware of it. And uh, one of the key people now that's working on this is Matt Kluskowski. 
uh, he's just come out with some new artificial intelligent designed profiles and presets. And of course, you know, all these guys need to make a living. So they're selling these presets and profiles on their website. And uh, Matt Kluskowski has just put out his new package. It's just been out a couple of weeks. Uh, and of course, I bought it. I haven't really uh, looked at it or used it that much lately. And eventually I will. And uh, and the reason I haven't is that I already have my own profiles and presets <laughs> that create my look, and I've been using them for 15 years. So uh, I'm kind of reluctant to change and, and get into to new profiles and presets. But I want to make you aware that this stuff is coming out now. It's new because it's artificially in intelligently formed that's different from the old presets. Okay, another guy that's come out with a package of new presets uh, is uh, Anthony Morganti. And uh, so his Lightroom presets, selling them for $47, except they're on sale for $29. And of course, guess what? I, I bought them. <laughs> I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. But see, he's given you 501 Lightroom presets. Uh, and then Lightroom presets are also good in Canberra Raw, so they work both ways. And believe me, you do not need 501 presets. All you really need is three or four presets. That's all you need. Okay. Um, Okay, so as I said, the good news is that all you need to do is come out, come up with a three or four presets, some actions, and some Photoshop skills, and then you'll be able to develop your own signature style. And at the bottom of the worksheet, you see that uh, you have my email address. If you send me an email, I'm gonna send you two of my four profiles and presets. And I'm gonna send you some actions uh, to go along with that, to get you going. Okay, and... Okay, so uh, how are we doing for time here, Louise? Oop, what happened to Louise? She's muted. It's 3.38, um, Larry's. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. Sorry, I muted everybody so you wouldn't get interrupted, <laughs> including myself. Oh. Um, yeah, I was. Your break is going to be around three fifty. So you, if if you're good to talk for another. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, that, I was hoping to get through this real quickly and then and get on to uh, doing at least one photo. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're in good shape. Okay. Good. Okay. So, uh, so. Just to review in a second, uh, first, uh, as I said, we are going to have, you know, some tutoring programs in Clubhouse 4, and I'm going to send you some uh, of my, two of my four profiles and presets and some actions. Uh, for those of you who are new, it's going to be difficult to figure, you know, to understand how you download and put in these actions and presets. So uh, I will try to put some directions in there when I email them to you. But if not, you'll have to come to the tutoring session and we'll get it worked out. Believe me, a lot of this stuff is just easy. It's only difficult because of the terminology and the difficulty that Photoshop creates for you by hiding stuff. And, um, 
And, and once you get that cleared up, you'll be okay. See, Photoshop was designed for like illustrators and graphic artists and stuff like that. And, and there's so many tools in there and so many things in there that just confuse you. We don't need all of that stuff. And so I'm going to try to demystify everything <laughs> and just make it simple, easy, and repeatable. Okay, so here's an image. This is a raw image. Uh, a lot of you, you know, in Rick's class, we were down there at the uh, horse barns stables and we photographed uh, these horses. And so this is a raw image. This is exactly what came out of my camera. So you can see how dull and flat it is. Okay, so we're gonna turn it into that. Okay, at least hopefully turn it into that. <laughs> now, this is the hardest part, is to try to come up with images that work. <laughs> uh, and it's <clears throat> really difficult to duplicate an image. So the image that I do today to show you how to get to this will not look like this. <laughs> uh, it's really hard, as I say, to duplicate an image so it comes out as good as this, but we're gonna try. Okay, so, so we're gonna start with this image. And uh, so you can see I shot at a 500 of a second at F4. ISO 1,250. Okay, so let's bring it into Photoshop. Uh, oops, I didn't mean Photoshop. I meant to say Camera Raw. Okay, so we're going to start in Camera Raw. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is go through the basic settings. But the funny thing is they put exposure up here in the top and I never, never start with exposure. I usually always start opening up the shadows, uh, maybe bringing down the highlights. Uh, sometimes they even open up the shadows 100% and uh, even bring down the highlights 100%. But let's just say we bring it down in here. Okay. And if it needs exposure, which I don't think this does, I may just open up the exposure a quarter to a third of a stop. Because you, if you start opening up the exposure too much, uh, the photo is just going to get washed out. Okay, I may add some texture. Let's say add about 24 texture, maybe add about 10 of uh, clarity, maybe add about five of the dehaze and about maybe 10 of uh, vibrates. Doesn't have to be exact, just something close. Okay, then once I do that, now I'm gonna come up here and talk about profiles. As I mentioned earlier, using profiles and presets is what's going to help develop your signature look or signature style. Okay, so if you hit the drop down menu, uh, well, I don't know why. That's interesting. It only has one there. Okay, come over and hit this browse profiles. Okay, so now, as I say, Photoshop's just changing every other week. Um, let me go back. I hardly ever use that. Maybe a lot of you did. If you did, you were way ahead of me. As I said, I was old school. I hardly ever hit this drop down menu and I hardly ever use this. But nowadays, if you take your cursor and you move it over, it should show you on your image how it changes, how the profile is working for you. And if it doesn't do that, that means you don't have a hidden button checked. <laughs> and that's found under preferences. So. Uh, I can't get into doing that right now, but here's, look, here's using Adobe Vivid. Look how that quickly changes, and in just one click, you've improved the image. Or you come up here to Adobe Landscape, and look, look how it's changed the image and gives you an instant start. 
Okay, so let's just pick Adobe Landscape. Click on that, go back, and now you've got a little better start. Now, the reason I picked this is I wanted to find something where I can uh, lighten the horse and darken this side. So you see, nowadays, you can't just have something applied to the image as a whole. You've got to make targeted adjustments. So we have to have a separate adjustment for the horse and a separate adjustment for the barn stall. Okay, so we're going to work on that. Okay, now the next thing you do is go down here to detail and make sure sharpening, noise reduction, and color noise are all slid over to the left to zero because all of this is going to be done with Topaz. Oh, by the way, you should have your workflow worksheet out looking at this and following along as I go along. I forgot to mention that. Get your workflow worksheet out. And uh, step number one says open in camera raw. That's what we just did. Okay. Step number two did basic adjustments. Step number three said cho choose a profile. Step number four, go to the detail panel and set noise and color reduction to zero. And then step number five says open uh, the optics panel. Okay, so you can see we're already on step five and it just took us a few seconds, right? Okay, great. <laughs> so now, check make sure remove chromatic aberration and use profile corrections are checked okay so now we're ready for number six just hit open and we're going to go to photoshop larry while that's happening i might add um for people who use lightroom all of the steps that he just showed in acr adobe camera raw are the same in Lightroom, it's just yes, that right. the color right. of the screen is a little different. So if you start your raw images in Lightroom, you just do these same steps. Thank you. Thank you. That was one of the things I forgot to mention. I do not use Lightroom. So those of you who do will have to make the adjustment of a little different language, maybe, and a little different format. Also on um, Windows and not Mac, so all of my uh, explanation will be in a, in a Windows <laughs> dialog. If you use Mac, I'm sure you know how to convert. Okay, now here's another thing that's a problem. I do not know how many people in the class are like beginners or intermediates. I don't know how many people are used to using uh, uh, this format um just had a brain freeze <laughs> layers that's the word i'm talking mm -hmm. trying to come up with being able to use layers so you, you know maybe uh to find this you come up to windows click on windows go down to workshop and mm -hmm. the default was essential. So when you first opened up Photoshop, this was your default. And I hate this look. So, so what I suggest is not to use this look. Go to Windows, Workspace, and come down to Photography. Okay. Now, even this, I don't like. And you can adjust it yourself and do all sorts of things and just totally change this yourself. Like, uh, first of all, whoops, let me move something here. Uh, I don't like libraries. I never use libraries. So just I just pull it out, hit this uh, little four line thing here and just say close group. Get rid of it. I don't I don't like it at all. And then this thing here that's uh, info. Uh, God, I don't think I've ever used it. Anyways, I don't like it where it is. So I just pull it out and I can just put it up here and drop it next to the navigator. Yep, what happened to my navigator? Did I lose it? Oh, gosh. Come here to Windows. 
come down to workspace, oops, come down, and then uh, where's my histogram? Whoops, I just goofed up. There it is. What happened to my histogram? Oh, doggone it. Okay, um, here I thought I was doing this great. Anyways, let's come back to Windows, Workspace, and I can come back to uh, Reset Photography. Okay, so I'm back again. Okay, so um, I don't want to slow things down here. Anyways, let me just pull out and get rid of this because uh, I don't want it there. Okay. And get rid of libraries. Um, okay. And then this is okay here. Now, what I do, I grab the toolbar and I pull it across and I put it right there. Okay, so why do I do that? Well, because I don't like having to bring my hand like this back and forth, back and forth, turning my eyes and turning my head. Since I'm right-handed, I want everything right here. So I move the toolbar over to here. Okay. And I just say I can grab this layers and I can pull it up like that. I got, I got, I got to move this up here, maybe. Okay. And then once you get it the way you like it, you come up to Windows, click on Windows, Workspace, come down here to New Workspace. Click these three and give your workspace a title. I don't just, I can just say uh, LG dash photography, something like that. Give it a name, oops, I hit the wrong thing. Okay, so uh, so what I've done here, I didn't do it right. I just put LG, <laughs> I hit enter instead of, uh, oh man, screwing up, screwing up. Okay, I, for, I didn't type in photo. Okay, so the reason why you have to save your workspace is that, look, I can move all of this stuff all around, drag it around, just screw things up like crazy. All I have to do is come up here to go Windows, Workspace, and then come down to here where it says Reset LG. Click on that, boom, everything just pop right back. So I hope you're saving your workspace. Create a workspace, save it. Okay, so now we have to talk about layers. layers. <laughs> okay. Now, a lot of people are used to coming up here and going under image, adjustments, and then doing all their work right here. Okay, so let's do just for kicks a hue saturation. Okay, then they make a hue saturation and I'll just goof this up like this and hit okay. Now notice here's my background layer. Everything went on the background layer. Let's say, and I can't change it now. Let's do uh, another something, image, adjustments, and uh, I'll come down here and we'll do a curves. And I'll just pull this up and lighten it. Hit OK. You see, everything went on the background layer. I can't change anything. I can't go back. I can't look at it. So we are never, ever going to use image adjustments from up here. This is a no-no. So I'm going to go back to history, and move away, go back to history, and come back up here to open. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to Please, can you mute the layers. And we're going to do everything from down here 
Do you see this little icon way down here at the bottom? Click on that. It's a half a circle. It's half black, half white. This has all of the adjustments that we're going to use, and it's going to be on the layers panel. So if I do a hue saturation like I did before, you see a layer pops up and says hue saturation. So if I pull this over, uh, let me get this. Keep getting that on. Uh, I'm going to move that over there. Okay. Um, then I can see this hue saturation and I can click the eyeball on and off to watch and see what I've done. And let's go again, come down here. We'll do a curves, do the same thing, just pull that up. And again, I can click the eyeball on and off and I can see what was done. If I don't like it, I can go back, just hit this properties, pops out again, and then I can correct this. So I have the ability to correct it. I can turn the eyeball on and off. If I don't like it, I can just grab it, pull it down to the garbage can, and it's gone. So this is the way we're going to work now. Create layers, have a separate layer for everything we do. And I'm going to give you a kind of a modern viewpoint of layers. We're not going to keep every layer. In the, in the old days, particularly with graphic artists and illustrators, they would have hundreds of layers and they would keep everyone and save everyone because like they have like 80 hours of work maybe tied up in a project. And if an advertiser came and said to them, look, I want my company logo changed from a yellow color to a green color, they could go back, find that one layer and change the color and save, a, uh, so they didn't have to start from the beginning and do 80 hours of work again. Well, we don't have that problem. So uh, I'm gonna show you kind of a, a different way using layers where we're only going to save them as long as we need them, and then we'll flatten them and move on. Okay, so hopefully we're ready to start now. Um, so we've opened it in Photoshop, and now the next step is use Crop Tool. Okay, so I hope you know the toolbar. So there's my Crop Tool. And uh, so uh, I'm going to have mine set to uh, width, height, and res resolution. I'm not going to fill that in. My images come in at 300 revolutions, so I don't have to bother to fill that in. <laughs> but I can't see the toolbar. Doggone it. Uh, my share screen is covering the toolbar. Oh, nuts. All right, let's see if I pull that down a little bit. Okay, that kind of helps. Okay, so I'm going to choose straighten. Oh, by the way, if you want the rule of thirds, you just click this grid and choose rule of thirds. Okay, so I'm going to straighten. Um, so I'm just going to, you don't have to like just to straighten horizontally, you can straighten vertically. So I'll just come here and straighten this. And I'll click on content aware fill to fill in the spaces. I do not click delete crop pixels. I want to leave the pixels until I am 100% certain uh, that I want to keep the crop and then I'll delete the pixels. Okay, so hit okay. So, come on computer, there we go. Oops, excuse me. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to, there we go. Okay, so we've got this straightened. Okay. So the next step, 
says replace sky. Obviously, we don't need to replace the sky in this image. And now we're ready to do denoise. Larry, I don't think we're seeing the straightened image. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't think we are seeing the straightened image. I am seeing the straightened image. It looks straightened. Yeah, it. Um, oh, okay. Um, I know on the outside it does look a little, a little askew there, but. Uh, I think it's the way the wood is at the bottom. Yeah. That's not you doing. Um, let me interject here. If you wanted to take a break now would be about your, uh, you know, 45 minutes from when you started. If you have a, another stopping place in mind, then just go ahead and let me know when you want to break. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's up to you, because if you don't need a break, I'm sure most of us are happy to keep going. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's take a break after doing this one image then. Okay. Okay, so now we've cropped the, excuse me, we've cropped the image and we decided this is the way I want to crop it. Okay, now normally I pick this image mainly because I wanted a dark horse and a light background here to show you various things in Photoshop. I probably would have cropped this image differently for compositional reasons, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And so we're, we're going to say, yes, this is good. We want it. OK, so now I'm going to flatten the image, which means I'm going to delete all of the uh, pixels that we got rid of from the crop. OK, so the way to flatten an image is two ways to do it. The shortcut is Control Q. The other way to do it is go over to where this four horizontal lines are, click on that, and that's where Photoshop hides a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. So you can come down to the bottom here where it says flatten image, click on that, and your image is now flattened. Okay, so then this is our background layer, and we want to preserve that. So that means so far, everything that we've done, we we like. We've gone through all the basic adjustments in camera raw. Those are fine. We want to keep them. We've done our cropping. We like it. We want to keep it. So now this is our background image. We like it. We want to keep it. We do not want to destroy, or destroy it or alter it. So we're going to duplicate the background image, which is a control J. And we're going to dupl duplicate the background image. So now everything we're going to apply to the layer one, which is a duplicate. And the background now is pure good. And we don't have to start from the beginning if we screw things up. OK, so now we're ready for Topaz Denoise, you go up here to uh, Filter, go down to Topaz Labs, and Topaz Denoise. Okay, now I really suggest that you people get involved with the artificial intelligence, and you're going to need Topaz Denoise and Topaz Sharpening. Okay, it defaults, uh, or I, I should say my choice is to use the split view. They have a standard clear, low light and severe noise. Forget raw, I don't know anybody using raw. Now you could see all four at once if you clicked the comparison view and you could move your rectangle here to where you wanted it. I do not use this. It's too time consuming. It takes too much time for me to, to study and look at and see which one of these is better than the other. Your eyeballs start bulging out. 
So I have found that 99% of the time I'm going to use clear. So I use the split view and choose clear. And then I click on model preference and that gives me the auto. And now Topaz artificial intelligence determines that they think there's high noise and they put it on high and they determine that, uh, that the sharpening should be on low. Okay, I don't know where, well, I do know where. Uh, I think they've decided that it's high noise because of this background here inside of the uh, stable. But uh, I am not seeing, well, yeah, see there in the background, you can see, you can see the noise, okay? So here's before and here's after. Now, this was not a super noisy in, uh, image, so, uh, so you're not really seeing the great work that it can do. Okay, so as I say, most of the time, 99% of the time, I just ex I have it on clear. And 99% of the time, I accept the settings that they choose. What I will do is where you see recover original detail. I usually, this is usually set to zero and I'll just move it up to about 40 to recover uh, original detail. And then you can just slide this back and forth to see before and after. And you can see that, as I say, this image wasn't too bad. So, uh, it, it did a good job, just hit OK. And so I could have been in and out of Topaz in like five seconds. Uh, but, you know, being that we're talking through it, it took a, a lot of, a uh, lot longer to talk through. OK, so uh, the processing speed is going to be determined by how fast your computer is. Excuse me, if you have a slow computer, it's going to take a little longer. Okay, so now you can see uh, the image is cleaned up by Topaz. Um, now you're, you're going to see some, uh, I have what's called a, yep, great, not oh, working. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so you can blow this up to 100% and turn your eyeball on and off and you you can just kind of see how it sharpened it a little bit cleaned up the noise okay so now we're ready for the next step um so so now we're ready for cleanup let's see got to look at my notes here Hang on a second. Okay, so now this image does not need very much cleanup. And in fact, there's, there's nothing really to clean up in this image. There's, there's uh, no distractions. So we'll skip the cleanup on this image. Uh, if there were cleanup, um, let me see where I'm at here. <laughs> okay. Uh, on, an, on another image, we're going to have some more cleanup. So we'll discuss that idea later. Okay. So, so now we're ready. We're going to select the horse because we want to work on the horse and we want to work on the background. Okay. So I hope you know that this is your select tool up here. And if you hold that down, you see that there's three hidden things here. This is the brand new selection tool that Photoshop uses. Since I'm old school, I don't like the new one. I like the old one. So I'm going to click on the selection tool. And then again, my share screen is messing me up here. So I have to drop this down a little bit. So I'm going to go select subject. And the artificial intelligence is going to select the horse. Now, it didn't do a perfect job, 
So you got to make sure that this plus button is chosen. So you can come over here and control the size of your brush with your bracket keys. And we'll come here and we'll just try to do a little bit of uh, adjustment. You can see that it's chosen a little bit of a stall door, which we don't want. So if you hold the Alt key, it does a subtraction. You see, if I this is the plus, if I hold the Alt key, it's going to go to subtract. And then I can just subtract out this tiny little section here with the uh, barn door. OK, it, your selection doesn't have to be perfect. Now we go to select and mask. And uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here on the right hand side. I don't. I've studied this for a long time and I've tried to move all these sliders and I've never had much luck with it. The only thing I, I'll go sometimes you have color aware versus object aware. Since we have the horse object, I'll stick with the horse uh, object aware. The key thing now is this refine edge brush. You want to make sure this is chosen, refine edge brush. And uh, what I'll do is, is uh, blow up the horse. And I'm going to vary with a small brush. I'm going to go right around the edge. And I'm going to get all these little hairs. Uh, Uh, so, Louise, are you seeing this okay? Yes, I can see. It. Okay. I can see the changes on the little hairs as you go around. Okay, good. So, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, okay, so now I can see a little red on the horse's eye there. That's so I can come back up here and get the selection tool and just touch with a very small brush. I can just touch that horse's eye and, and reselect that horse's eye again. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now the only thing I wanna do over here on the right side is just highlight feather and click two. Okay, so I'm feathering the selection kind of 2%. Uh, reason being like if, if Selection, sometimes you don't want your selection to look like you cut it out with the scissors. So feathering it to a kind of just blur the edge a little bit so it looks natural. Okay, so now uh, I just come down here and I'm going to have to move this back up again. Come down here and hit OK. Okay, so we have our horse selected. Okay, now this is real, real important. We need to save this selection. Okay, so we come up here to select and come down here to see where it says save selection. Click on that and give this selection a name. Okay, generally to me, horse is a great name. Okay, I don't bother to write out horse. I just go H and hit okay. <laughs> If you want to write out horse, that's up to you, but I just use H. Because we are going to use this selection over and over again. Remember I said easy and repeatable. We're going to use it over and over again. So you don't want to keep reselecting it all the time. Okay, so now we've selected the horse, we've saved it. Okay. So now we're ready for a Photoshop adjustment. Now I said, we want to lighten this horse. It's too dark. Okay, there's two ways to lighten it. We can use a curves adjustment or we can use uh, the dodge tool. Okay, so I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, so first way we, we're going to use is curves. So you come down here to this little circle 
It's half black, half white. Click on it and come up here to curves. Okay, so there's our curves adjustment. And I know most of you pretty much hate curves. All right, so where am I going to get rid of this? Okay, I know most of you hate curves. Oops, I lost it. Okay. And I think you hate it because I don't think teachers teach it properly. You know, I think they, they want to uh, kind of, uh, you know, show off a little bit. And they go, oh, well, you know, you're going to put a dot on the curve. And if you want to lighten it, you'll pull up. And if you want to darken it, you'll pull down. Well, where do you put the curve? Do you put it here? And how much do you pull up? Do you put it, uh, oh, by the way, this this line with a, arrow curved, you hit that and, and your point goes away. Should you put the point here, pull down or up? Uh, should you put the point here and pull down or up? And you can see how crummy it looks. And, and you just, uh, you get so frustrated trying to figure out where to put the points. So I think, you know, most of us always hated curves. Okay, well, hey, there's a simple, easy way to use curves. See where it says default? Go over here to the drop down menu, hit that, and you see where it says lighter? That's what we want to do. We want to lighten the horse. Boom, just hit lighter and look what happened. The horse is lighter. Photoshop picked the point for us and moved the curve up. <laughs> Simple. Didn't even have to do a thing except pick lighter. I don't know why teachers don't teach that. Okay, now if you look over here on your curves, if you hold the Alt key and then click on your mask, there's your mask. The white means the horse was picked and the black means uh, that, that that's the stable and, and the stable wasn't selected, only the horse was selected. Okay, so, so you see using curves, it not only names it for you, it gives you a mask that's there. You can hit the eyeball on and off and you can see exactly what was done. And if you wanna change it, just come back up here, hit properties and come over to this curve and then you can, you can change it if you want. Okay, we're gonna leave it, hit this and it'll go back. Okay, so now, We want to now darken the barn, okay? So we have the horse selected. To darken the barn, we just have to do the rest of it, or the inverse of it. Now there's two ways to do it. There's an easy way and a harder way. I'm gonna show you the harder way. <laughs> so to make sure you understand it and then, and then we'll talk about the easier way. So you come back up here to select. Now we've already saved the selection. So you see it's grayed out. We're gonna go load selection. So click on load selection, hit the drop down menu and pick H for horse. Now, we don't want the horse. We've already worked on the horse. We want the inverse of the horse. So click on invert and hit OK. And now you see the marching ants going around the image. OK, so we said we want to darken this. So now you come back down here, hit the curves, or excuse me, hit, hit the adjustment icon. Come back up here to curves. And now you see the new mask. And now we go to default and we want to darken it. So go to darker, boom. See how easy that was? Photoshop just picked the point for you and moved the curve line down. So this is darker, okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention here, <laughs> always forgetting things here. You have more control over it than you think because now, see, you've got this opacity here. You can hit the opacity and from 100%, you can go down to zero, you can go to 50, you can go to 70, 
but we want to keep it up at 100, so we'll leave it here. But the opacity slider is very, very important. It's for you to fine tune the adjustments. Okay, so you look at this and you go, well, gosh, I'm already at 100%, and I still want to have this a little darker. Well, real simple. All you have to do is do it again. So do a control J, duplicate that layer, and look how much you just darkened it again with just a control J. Now notice you didn't even touch the horse, right? Because we unselected the horse. Okay, so, so now you did a control J and you darkened it even more. But again, you have control. You can go to your opacity and you can bring that down to zero and then move it up and say, well, you know, on my control J, I just want to do it at 25 or 27 percent. And, and it's wherever you want it. That's what you do. OK. And if you say, well, oh, you know what? I don't even like that layer at all. I don't even want it at all. Just grab it, pull it down to the trash can. OK. So now, let's see, where are we now? OK. OK, so now, I got to see where I'm at now. I've lost my place here now. Okay, so we did the select subject. We saved it. Um, okay, so yeah. Okay, so now uh, let's say we want to add some contrast. Now, now a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you, the image doesn't necessarily need it, but I'm going to show you uh, so you understand what we're doing here now. Okay, so now I want to give some contrast, let's say, to the whole image. Okay, but you see, I have already selected the barn. So now we have to, to deselect everything. So this is important. So now you go Control D, which deselects the barn. Okay, and now we're ready to do a contrast. Okay, that's also on curves. So you come down here, hit your adjustment, come up to curves, hit your curves. Now, again, the Photoshop teachers will say, well, put three dots on your image and then, you know, make yourself an S-shaped curve and, Oh, God, you're just going to drive yourself crazy figuring that out. So don't do it. Just hit the drop down menu and you've got three choices. You've got increased contrast. You've got medium contrast. Oh, excuse me, you've got four choices. Strong contrast and my favorite linear contrast. OK, so, so you've got those three choices in contrast. Now, this image doesn't need a ton of contrast. So your increased contrast or strong contrast would only be good if you had an image that was totally uh, washed out. OK, so uh, let's just do a strong contrast just to show you. OK, so here, look, Photoshop already picked the points and bent the F-shaped curve for you. OK, but it's pretty strong. And uh, so if, even if you took your opacity down, uh, it, it might work at about 26%, something like that. It might work. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pull it down. Uh, all right, let, let's just go back and uh, we'll get rid of it. And then uh, go to linear contrast. That's one of my favorites. And it's just a very subtle little contrast. So you hit, hit the eyeball on and off. You can hardly even tell that it, that it was put on. OK, so that, that's your contrast. And of course, you could add your hue sack. You could add vibrance. You could add saturation and so forth. Uh, it depends on what the image needs. 
Okay, so um, so next we're going to go to dodge and burn. Dodge and burn is really, really important. Of course, you know, Ansel Adams was really big on dodging and burning. And with dodge and burn, you've got to have a proper layer to put on dodge and burn. Okay, so this, if you see the notes there on uh, dodge and burn, it says a stamp visible layer. And it is shift, control, alt, plus E. And it's kind of a thing, finger bender. It's going to take two hands to kind of do it. It's a stamp visible layer is what Photoshop calls it. I kind of call it a master layer. It takes all of these layers and kind of puts them together and gives you a nice clean layer to work on. And, and that's what we're going to put our dodge and burn tools on. Okay, so over here, we're going to come to a dodge tool. And we'll start out up here at the top. It gives you shadow, midtones, and highlights. We'll start with shadow. And always start with a very uh, a hardness of zero. You want a very soft brush. Okay. and we're going to now dodge, which is going to lighten up this horse. OK, now, to make it easier to lighten them up, uh, let's make a selection. Well, we already have a selection. So come up here, go select, load selection, hit the drop down menu, hit H for horse, hit OK, and there's your horse. OK. And we don't like to look at these uh, marching ants. So we use the control H to hide them. They're still there. Hit control H and they're back again. Hit control H and they're hidden. Now the purpose of this hiding the ants and selecting the horse is we can go outside the lines and it's not going to matter. So if I had a brush of 100%, and, uh, oh, by the way, I forgot we're on dodging, so we have to come down here and click this to get the white. Oh, wait a second. Do we have to do that? Yeah, maybe not. Uh, Larry, not one other tiny thing. You said that you were going to choose shadows, but you clicked on mid-tones. Oh, no, no, I said, no, I... It was on shadows. I, I want. To... Okay. All right. Okay. See, I, I use a different dodge and burning. So that, and I'm going to show you that next. So I got a little confused on that one. Okay. So if we want a hundred percent brush to demonstrate anything, you just hit zero and your brush turns to a hundred percent. Okay. So see, I can go over this and nothing is happening. But if I go over the horse, you see it's turning to 100% and the horse is lightning, but the barn isn't. See, that's the good thing about having the selection. You can come over here and uh, not worry about going outside the lines. Okay, so your brush is controlled by the number keys. So if you want a 10% brush, you hit one. You want a 20% brush, you hit two. If you want a 5% brush, you got to hit 0.5, kind of fast, and you get a 5% brush. Okay, so we want to get rid of this. So you can either do control Z to get rid of it or do the history channel, uh, the history channel, <laughs> your history uh, palette here, and go back here to, uh, let's see, uh, load selection. Okay, right there. Okay, and then we've taken that off. Okay, so we're going to dodge, and I usually dodge at about 10%. Okay, so we're going to come in here, and we're lighting the horse. Every time you lift the mouse, uh, it's going to put 10% on top of 10%. And because we're at such a low 
opacity setting, you're not going to get it really blown out. However, we do want to stay away from the real white areas. We only want to go over the areas that are in the shadow. Okay, and then we may want to go up to, uh, oh, let, let's say uh, 20, 30 percent, make the brush small, and uh, get in here and open up this eye. And so, uh, in fact, we could get up here into 30 percent, open up that eye. Okay, so we've now kind of, uh, look what we've done to the horse, see? Okay, so now we've got our dodge on one layer, and now we want to do some burning. So I like to do a control J, and I like to put, oops, that's not going to work. <laughs> Reason why it wouldn't work is because we have the horse selected. So now I got to do a control D to deselect the horse. And now I can do a control J and duplicate the layer. So whenever you, you make a mistake, it's usually because in the background you have a selection chosen that you forgot that you had and you've got to deselect it in order to get yourself a new layer to work on. Okay, so now we have a new layer, and now I'm going to go to the burn tool. And usually with the burn tool, I usually want that at 5%. So I'll go 0, 5. And I kind of want it. Oops. So I want to darken this area over here. And every time I lift the mouse, it puts another 5% on top of 5%. If you want to go a little faster, use 10%. Okay. Okay, so eyeball on and off. You can see how much I darken that area with the burn tool. Okay, so... Let's see, where are we now? Okay, so now we're kind of at, at a spot now where let's say we're about finished uh, and we want to do our sharpening. Okay, so we're, we're at a stage now where we could, if we wanted to, if we said we like this all, we could flatten the image. Uh, and then just continue from there with a flattened image, or we could just keep going. And I'm going to just keep going and we'll flatten it at the end. Okay, so now we've got to do another stamp visible layer. So we have to go Control, Alt, Shift, and hit E, because we want to create another layer, and now we want to put the sharpening on it. So we go over here to filter, Topaz Labs, Sharpen AI. And by, by the way, when you buy your Topaz um, and download it, it will automatically go into uh, Lightroom and into Camera Raw for you. Okay, now let's see here. Again, I'm going to go, I'm going to take this little icon off. Well, okay, well, I, I should take a minute to do this. Whenever you get a new program, always go into the preferences and look at the preferences and set them. So for Topaz, um, for Topaz, you go to File and go to Preferences. And it'll give you, we'll start with the application first. 
Okay, so the background color, black, I like that, I'll keep that. The controls are on the right, I like that, I'll keep that. Auto update preview, I have that selected. And anonymous data collection, I have that selected. Okay, here's the key thing, the processing. Okay, now notice I've got an NVIDIA GeForce uh, video card. Okay, so it's a pretty good one. So I've selected that for my processor. If you do not have a fast computer, or you don't have a good video card, probably select auto and let the program decide to use what it wants to use. Okay, so since I have a good video card, I'm selecting that. And then I have it set to high. Okay. Uh, depending on the speed of your computer, uh, it <laughs> it's going to determine how fast the program works. So mine works pretty fast. Uh, I've, I've heard other people say it may take them uh, three or four minutes <laughs> for the program to do its thing. Okay. Now, here is all of their sharpening programs. There's a heck of a lot of them. And as I said, this is all artificial intelligence and it's determining by looking at your image what it thinks uh, it should do. Now, mostly I'm shooting birds and I'm hand holding. Okay, so the bird is moving and I'm moving. So a lot of my images are gonna be motion blur, either very blurry, very noisy or normal. Uh, sometimes when I have stationary objects like this, uh, the horse could have moved slightly or I could have moved slightly so, and it might be slightly out of focus. So you've got three kind of out of focus choices or generally it could just be too soft for whatever reason. Or you could end up in standard. Okay, so you could come in here and, and get and set up your different choices, but believe me, oh God, does it take time and, and your eyes have to study it to look at it. And unless you have just a super image that you, you know, this one of your, your portfolio type images, it's probably not worth the time doing all that. So again, I just usually stick with the split image. And, uh, and in this case, uh, we could come down here and um, kind of just let the program decide. So the program decided that it's going to pick standard and it's going to pick motion blur and it already set the settings. No, here. It, it didn't pick standard. You need to turn on the auto for the sharpen model. Hmm? You need to turn on the auto for sharpen model for it to pick. Um, At the top, uh, by the side of sharpen model uh, there. Well, Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it decided motion blur. Thank you, Roddy. Yeah, it decided motion blur. But <sighs> this horse was standing still. I was pretty still, so I'm not picking motion blur. Uh, so I'm going to pick standard. And now here's something that's interesting out of this. Suppose you just want to sharpen the horse. You don't want to sharpen the rest. Okay, so see, see this little tiny icon down here? Click on that. I don't know why they make it so small. And um, boy, saying I got low system resources, huh? Wow. Don't understand that. Okay, so I'm going to add. And I'm going to click the edge selection. 
And so what I'm going to do is, is I am just going to pick the horse. I'm going to make a, a selection just of the horse. And that's all I want to sharpen is the horse. Now, probably I would have selected to sharpen the whole image, but I want to show you this feature here. Now, notice I went outside the line some, so you could hit subtract, come in here, get a smaller brush, and I could select that out where I kind of went a little outside the line, but it's not really necessary. Okay, then hit apply. You got to hit apply again. See, it, it's just showing you that it did the mask. Now hit apply again. And you got to wait, depending on how fast of a computer you have. And I have been having some computer issues recently. So it looks like it's taking a while. Come on. A quick question while we're waiting. Well, just have to wait. At the end? Oh, okay. okay. Just, just wait. Okay, so now we've sharpened this and we've only sharpened the horse, which which is a good thing artistically because it, it makes the horse pop out. Okay, so so now I don't know if you noticed, but the workflow is you start in camera raw and you're basically going to end in camera raw. Okay, so now we come up here to filter and go down to camera raw filter. So now we're almost done. So we'll go into the basics panel and we'll kind of decide, well, let's see, should we bring the highlights down a little bit? Maybe open the shadows a little bit, uh, maybe add a little more texture, maybe a little more clarity, could add a little more vibrance if we wanted to, but I don't think we will. Okay, now, what I think you should come down to is color mixer and choose luminance. And now you have the choice of uh, adding some red, uh, maybe adding a little orange, darken the oranges a little bit, uh, play around with the yellows. Uh, I don't think there's any greens, blues, probably not any purples. So now if you hit this icon down here, you can see that that was before and now that's after. And if you like that, uh, we're okay. Then you can come down to effects and add a little vignette. So I put the feather to a hundred. And uh, usually I don't like a real heavy vignette. So I'll just go about somewhere around around in there, around 15 to 20, hit okay. And so basically we're finished, unless, unless we wanna add some artistic kinds of things like make it glow, make the image pop or add some richness. Okay, so let's, let's make the image pop a little bit. Uh, we'll save the make it glow for another time. Uh, so we want to bring that horse out. We want to make that horse pop. Okay, so we have to select the horse. Okay, so come up here and go select. Go down to load selections. Hit the drop down menu. Hit H for horse. Boom, we got the horse again. Okay, we don't like the ants. 
So we'll go control H, we hide them, come down here to adjustments, and we'll come up here now to levels. Okay, take the right hand slider. You see, if we move the right hand slider, we're only affecting the horse, nothing else. Okay, so obviously we don't want to do that much. So somewhere between 240, somewhere around in there. And then uh, you can hit your eyeball on and off. And uh, and so you can see what we've popped the horse and made the horse stand out. Now again, I'm kind of doing things a maybe a little too much. You know, you want to do kinds of subtle things. Okay, so the last thing then is uh, to come down and. Uh, so this is an action that I'm going to send you. one of my favorites. So you come up here to the action panel, you hit this action button, pull this down, come down here, which says Larry set copy. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to you. So you'll have uh, my dodge and burning techniques, you'll have make it glow, and you'll have an action for linear contrast. So you just touch, Click on linear contrast, come down here to the play button, hit the play button, boom, it puts up a layer and then puts the linear contrast on there for you. It's changing the mode to luminosity. So you can click the eyeball on and off and you can see just it gives it that little richness to it. And so that's one of my favorite presets. Okay, so <laughs> whew, we're finished. Okay, now obviously you might do, do a few other things, but that's it, we're gonna leave it at that. Okay, so now you have to save it. Uh, and you can flatten it and save it. You can say, okay, I'm happy with this, totally happy. And so you can come over and do a control Q and flatten it and then go up and, you know, hit your save as and save it. Okay, I think we're ready for some questions. <laughs> okay, so. I have a question. Okay, that's Jack, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Larry, uh, do you always base your, the, let's call them the tone change, changes that you handled with curves, or do you ever do an image where you work off of levels as your primary control? Uh, well, you saw that make it pop was levels. And then the other ones were curves. So your primary control is always curves, not levels, and then use levels as an accent or a, once you've established everything with curves, is that always your, your workflow? Um, well, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, get, I guess I use curves more than levels, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's mostly a matter of preference um, because curves and levels do essentially the same things. It's just how you how you vary the different things. How do I get a full screen here? <laughs> um. What are you trying to do, Larry? You try to stop sharing. Here, I can st stop your sharing. There. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that what you want? <laughs> I'm all powerful. <laughs> as long as Rodney reminds me. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, anybody else have questions? Um, Patty does. 
Okay. There you go. Can I ask one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, excellent, excellent presentation. You covered so much stuff. My head is exploding. <laughs> but my main question is about sharpening. You have you sharpen twice during your tutorial. What do you, what do you recommend in the beginning or at the end? Do I make all my adjustments and then sharpen it at the end? What okay, how does well, it affect the pixels? No, so he didn't, he didn't, sharpen, he didn't sharpen twice. Oh, okay. okay. I misunderstood. Okay, hey, he didn't know it's the name sharpen. Excuse me. I, I'm the one talking. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, in Canva Raw, we've I've asked you to like turn off the sharpening and turn off the noise reduction in Canva Raw. Oh, okay, okay, now you're doing uh, Topaz Denoise. Now Topaz Denoise has sharpening built into it. Okay, so. So in a sense, you're sharpening in the beginning with topaz denoise. Then you're sharpening at the end again mm -hmm. with uh, topaz sharpen AI. So yeah, that is in a way uh, double sharpening. Now, I haven't shown you a way of using masks to kind of uh, get rid of artifacts and over sharpening, because I, I can't show you everything. <laughs> it's uh, kind of I like you gotta I turn the sharpening you walk, off. Walk before you run. So I can't show you everything. Uh, so, yes, in a sense, you're double sharpening, but there Larry, are ways to correct that. Larry, I turn the sharpening off in denoise. Yeah, um, that's, again, as I said, th th this is my workflow. You have to design a workflow that fits you. And that's the whole purpose of this, is, is for you to, to make it yours. I think you've done a good job so far of showing us about the customization options during these different steps. Right. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Anybody else have a question? I have a question. Oh, Linda. Um, uh, Larry, when you were doing the sharp, it's on sharpening too. You were just sharpening the horse and the processing time was really quick. And uh, I know that you have a processing card. Was that due to the card or just because you were processing that smaller portion of the image? Would it have taken longer if you were processing the entire image? Uh, yeah, I probably probably would yeah and in in that image i probably would have sharpened the whole image uh but again i just wanted to show you uh the option that the program gives you also rodney can clarify on this but one of the reasons it might be running a little slower than you are, have it typically running is because you've got all this zoom stuff going on at the same time right. is that isn't that right rodney or no yeah i mean yeah. yes you've, you've got extra stuff oh, yeah. running yeah. running on your computer yeah. simultaneously so that's why you're getting occasional yeah. tiny lags it's not been <laughs> bad and from you know when you're expecting it to do something the way it normally does it's a little pokier right. but yeah without zoom on whatever anybody else does on their machine will be the same as usual for them. Did that answer your question, Linda? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Great presentation, Larry. Loved it. Learned a lot. Learned a He's lot. Got, you're doing an, another, uh, this is for the break or did you decide to go straight through, Larry? Um. Well, yeah, why don't we take a five minute break and, uh, and then you're going to hit a second and, and then we'll, I hopefully be able to do two more uh, you know, run throughs and, and maybe not have to talk as much and just go through quickly. Okay. okay. All right. So it's like 444 right now. So you just want to take five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah let's do a five minute yeah. quick break. See y'all back here soon. Whoa. Holy cow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Ooh, I can't believe how long that took. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a complicated thing. And as you go along, you find things that just feel like they need a little more explanation. But it's great. You're getting wonderful comments. And I know I'm learning stuff. So I get bored. <laughs> no, no, I don't think anybody's bored. <laughs> It, you know, there's a saying, Larry, there's 20 ways to skin a cat in, in yeah. Photoshop, and I've loved the way you work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to make it easy and repeatable. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, take, you know, demystify it. And, uh, so. so let me ask, answer one thing some, um, that was asked in the chat. Um, was about whether you were going to supply anything with these steps. So the worksheet does already give the general order. But the second thing is that we are recording this session. So once that recording is made available, you can just pretend it's a YouTube or something and watch it over and over again until you get it right and pause it and move it at your own pace. So you're on, Larry, and I'll shut up. <laughs> Okay, is everybody back? Okay, let's see. I have to share again, right? Okay. Uh, oops, get rid of that. And um, opening. Oh, there we go. Uh oh, oh, so did I lose you? Uh, yeah, well, it says Zoom, your screen is saying Zoom quit unexpectedly. Exactly, but we still see you and we still hear you. Yeah, so just click the X, why don't you? And let's see what, yeah, we're definitely seeing your screen. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, all righty, shoot. So, <laughs> Zoom had a brain fade. Okay, all righty. Um, there we go. Okay. Okay, so we just did that one. Okay, mm -hmm. so now um, let's do this one. Okay, because this is the one I said we were going to do. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, okay, so that's the image started with, and then that's the image we ended up with. Okay, so let's go back and take this one, and. Uh, We'll open it up in camera raw. Okay, so again, we said we're gonna start with the basic. And um, so again, you know, I saying, you know, hit these drop downs and we can choose landscape. Uh, but first, uh, let's just, uh, get the bird in here. And so we'll open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. I'm gonna go real fast and let's see, give it some texture, a uh, little clarity, uh, some dehaze and a little vibrance. And again, as I said, real fast, we're gonna come in the detail. I already have it set to zero and uh, on the optics, I already have that checked. Okay, so now, um, let me talk just a second about these new concepts that I mentioned that Matt Klaskowski and Anthony Moraganti are talking about on the uh, profiles and presets. Okay, so. Clicking on the presets, we said, okay, we'll pick landscape for the preset that we're using. But look down here and you see, here's a whole bunch of presets, a standard pack, vibrant, golden pack. Okay, I bought those from a, a bird photographer I like named uh, Jan Wagoner. Uh, again, as I said, I haven't used them. Eventually, maybe I will. Here's Matt Klaskowski's uh, pro, uh, profiles uh, that he has. 
And again, I haven't used them. I bought them. Uh, and then notice down here, here's a bunch of profiles that Photoshop is giving you free. Okay, so you click on that. And then here's a whole bunch of artistic ones. So you can click over that and find a look that you like. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are crummy. And but remember what I said, to get a look that's going to help you develop your signature style, you only need a couple of them. So, you know, you, you may look through hundreds and hundreds of presets to just find the one or two that you like. Okay, so let's just say you happen to like Artistic Free. Okay, you see this little star over here? Mm -hmm. Can you see that okay, Louise? Yeah. Okay, if you like it, just hit this star. And then, now uh, yeah, let's see, add to favorites and then click on favorites. And um, now where the heck is it? You see up here where it says favorites? Right. Hit that drop down and there it is. It's under mm -hmm. your favorites. So when you look through hundreds and hundreds of profiles, click the favorites and you'll get your four or five ones that you like under the favorites. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't like it, just hit that star again and it's gone. Okay, so uh, that's your presets. Uh, now coming over here, Photoshop has done a whole bunch of new sets, new stuff, excuse me, that was profiles. This is presets. If you click on this, then it brings up a whole new panel. And again, as I say, this is the new AI stuff that is so new that uh, it's just coming out in the next, in, in these few months. And so here's one here, it says Contrastly, a free starter pack. Got that free. And look how many he gave me here. <laughs> Jesus, I haven't got time to look through all of these. And some of them are good, but, uh, you know, and here's Matt Kloskowski has the ones we looked at before were his profiles. These are his presets. Okay. And uh, let's see now. Um, oh, yeah. These all in here. And I don't know why I didn't put his name. These are Anthony Marganti's uh, presets. And again, remember I said he, he's given you a hundred, uh, 501 of them. Okay. I haven't even bothered to look at them just yet. Okay, and then here's all of these are Adobe Photoshop's presets that they're giving you free. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just showing you where they are. I don't use them yet. Eventually, I probably will use some of them. It's the new thing under artificial intelligence. Okay, just want to show that to you. So we're going to go back now and uh, continue. Now, the reason I picked this image is that I am going to have to crop the heck out of this image. And in so doing, I'm losing a lot of pixels. Okay. And so it's going to make it really hard uh, to print it or even get it big enough uh, for people to show on a big screen. So we're going to have to upscale it. And Topaz has a great program called Gigapixel that I think's the best. However, Photoshop also has a program called Enhance. And I don't know how many of you even know that, uh, that this program exists, because Photoshop does a great job of hiding it. Okay, <laughs> so where do they hide it? You see this three dots right here? If you hit those three dots, it opens up a whole bunch of stuff. And right down here, there's Enhance. So you could either find it under the three dots, or you just come over to the image and right click on the image and come down to Enhance. So click on Enhance, and that this pops up an image here. And um, you have to make sure super resolution is checked. And once you check super resolution, this raw detail grays out. So you make sure super resolution is uh, checked. And then you can come here and I can just click on the 
bird's face and then that image will show up here. Okay, then click enhance. And what this is doing, it tells you here that uh, double doubles image resolution, ideal for large displays and prints. Okay, so click on that. And then where is it? What happens? <laughs> Again, Photoshop <laughs> kind of hides things for you. So you don't even see it until you come down here, see this film strip thing right here, mm -hmm. click on that, and there it pops up on the left. Okay, so you can see here's your raw image, here's your enhanced image, click on that. Okay, now we've already made all the adjustments. So all the, all the adjustments are already applied. So we don't have to uh, do that again. It's already applied. Just come down here and hit open. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna close this guy out and I'm going to uh, close my bridge to give my program more resources to work. <laughs> okay, now uh, notice, uh, you can't see it too well here. Let me just move this up a shade. Okay, notice the size of the image here. It's uh, 36.48 by 24. 0.32. So we've doubled the length and doubled the width of this image, which basically has made this image like four times bigger. Okay, so now we want to crop it. Okay, and I'm just going to real fast uh, just do a square crop and uh, and not worry too much about anything here okay so so i'm just going to do this real quickly um shoot doggone it there we go okay okay so now i'm going to go ahead and do a uh, control q so that i flatten the image and uh, okay, so here's an image we want to bring a sky in. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do uh, is do a selection. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go uh, with my selection tool. Oh, shoot, this thing here. Hit select subject. And so that did a pretty good job of selecting it. Uh, I'll hit the select and mask. Larry, did you want to duplicate it first? Uh, yeah, that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Well, we'll just uh, I'll just continue. Hopefully, we right. can we can get by on it. Okay. Um, but Rodney's correct. We should duplicate it so that we don't mess around with the back uh, with the background layer there. Okay, so now I got to make sure that my refine edge brush is selected, and I'm just going to hit all these areas here that are in between the feathers that weren't picked. Okay, and uh, in between the claws. And uh, okay, and the, and that looks pretty good. This needs maybe a little more here. Okay, then I'm gonna come over to feather and uh, select that and hit two, and uh, then just hit okay. But the key thing is to remember to come over here to select and go save selection. And I'll just type in B for bird, hit okay. And so now 
uh, what I can do then is, uh, let's see now. Um, I'm going to, just for the heck of it, yeah, let's duplicate the layer now. You um, want to drop the selection first. Yeah, okay, so uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, no, okay, yeah, I better, okay, better do this mm -hmm. right. Go control D to deselect. Okay, then duplicate. Control J. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to go to, um, let's see, what, what is that? Select, select, edit, sky replacement. No, you want, you want, don't you want to do the selection again first? Uh, no, I'm going to, I'll just leave it now for the time being. Okay, so, I, so I'm into the Photoshop sky replacement. I are, if I hit that, then it gives me all of these sky choices. I don't know. I think, I don't know how many of you have already used this. So this mm -hmm. is the sky I'm choosing. I hardly ever touch any of these. Uh, you can, you know, darken the sky. You can change the temperature. I rarely do that. But the key thing I want to do is like, here's the light mm -hmm. side of this. The light is on the right side of the bird, so I can flip this and bring the light side of the sky onto the light side of the bird. Okay, so I want to do this real fast because we're running out of time. So I'll just hit OK. Now, um, if I look at this and I say, well, you know, the sky needs to be darker. Uh, then I can, you know, I can come up here and uh, load my selection. Hit the drop down, hit the bird, hit invert. And now I've got the sky selected. Come down here, hit curves. Come up here to default, hit darker. My sky is darker. If I want to fine tune it, I've got the opacity to fine tune it. And uh, of course, I should have probably done the topaz. <laughs> uh, so again, you don't have to do everything in order. You know, you can jump around a little bit here, but it's better to do the topaz in the beginning. So I should have done the topaz. See, Rodney, I needed you to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so I need to do the topaz, but I have an adjustment layer on here. I do not have uh, a proper layer to do the topaz on. So, hey, you know what to do? Let's just uh, flatten it because we like everything we did. Let's just flatten it and now do a control J and come back up here and do the filter, mm -hmm. uh, topaz and do the do the denoise. Okay, and let's get through this denoise thing real quickly. And uh, so I'm gonna leave it on clear. It's already, uh, the auto is already set. You can see down here, it says clear is updated. Psh, boom, apply. And as soon as that runs through, I'm out of here. So look how fast I did the, uh, the denoise. Come on, computer. There we go. So we're out of the denoise. Okay, so uh, there's no cleanup in this. So uh, I can just, you know, keep moving ahead and I can do some Photoshop adjustments. But uh, again, to speed things up, the key thing this needs is we can't see the bird's eye and the face and stuff like that. So, so that's what we need to work on. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the dodge and burn, but I'm gonna use my method with the action that I sent you. Okay, so, so let's see how we do this. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go select, load selection. So you see why it's so important to save the selection. 
boom, there's the bird. You don't like the ants, just do a control H, hide it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my dodge and burn. So I hit the action, come down here to where it says Larry set copy and do the dodge and burn. Click on that, hit the action and boom, pops up a message here. It says use black brush uh, on the burn layer and a white brush on the dodge layer. Use a soft edge brush with flow turned down very low. Okay, I got this from a, a Photoshop guru that I followed for 20 years, Colin Smith. Okay, okay, so now notice he's given us a group and he's given us a layer for dodge. She says you gotta use light and burn, you gotta use dark. Okay, so, so I want to dodge. So I click, I have to click on the dodge layer and it says I need to use light, which is white. So I have to come down here, click on that and make that white. And see, it's already selected a brush for me. And I want my opacity, I'm gonna have the opacity at 10%. So I'm gonna push the number one and make that 10%. Okay, so, um, oops. Okay, now, so dodge is to lighten. So I wanna go over and I'm gonna lighten up the dark areas. Oops, what happened here? That shouldn't have done that. Huh. Oh, nuts, what's going on? Thought I had the bird selected. Hmm. That's what the mask indicates. Let me, let me go back. Oh, no. And select, let's, uh, let me go back here. Something just happened here. Uh, create, right. um, okay, let me make sure, select. Load selection, bird, okay, uh, control H, hide the ants, and uh, okay, yeah, something happened, the selection got knocked off. Okay, so I want to go over the bird and stay away from the light areas, I just do in the dark areas. And I want to do the face. Okay. Now I see, you see how much we've lightened that? Again, you know, you want to be subtle, but I want to get the eye. So I'm going to hit the number two, which makes the brush 20%. And I'm going to come in and just keep working on that eye, work on the, the dark areas, maybe hit the, beak a little bit and look how we brought that eye out okay now again this is where you you've got to be artistic and and subtle and uh take your time i'm i'm really rushing it okay so okay so so we've done that um now, if you want to do the burn, you could click on the burn layer, but you have to change this back to black. And burning requires a very delicate brush, so you, you should probably just use 5%. And, uh, and you can come in here and, you know, darken whatever you think needs to be darkened. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you want this area right in here. You want to kind of just hit that a few times and darken that a little bit. Those real those areas that got burnt yeah. out. We're going to take care of that a little bit later. But so I'm just giving you a, a, an idea on how to use the burn layer. Now the important thing is once you finish with dodge and burning, you have to close the group. So you close that so that you can move on to the next step. And uh, 
again for time. I'm going to, you know, move uh, very quickly. Uh, you could add contrast to this. Uh, you could, uh, but again, we're going to th then uh, sharpen it. So we could act, do that. I'm going to skip that step. Let's just jump back into uh, camera raw to kind of finish this up. Okay, so, so we need to add a layer. So we'll put a uh, stamp visible layer, which is control, alt, shift, and E. And then we'll go into filter and camera raw filter. And we'll kind of finish this up. Oh, uh, see, I made a mistake. Okay, so I got to cancel out of this. Notice how the image is all shrunken. Because guess what I did? We have a selection here. Mm -hmm. The bird has been selected. So guess what? I got to do a control D and deselect it. <laughs> now I could go into filter, camera raw filter. So I, I'm making these mistakes mm -hmm. intentionally. So, so it makes you feel better. <laughs> okay, so see, now we got the whole image because we had a selection and we had a delete, a deselect the selection. Okay, so let's open up the basic panel and we can bring the highlights down, probably down to uh, zero. I don't think we need to open the shadows any, but you can try maybe just a tad. Uh, you could add a little more texture. You could add a little more clarity. Uh, Uh, I'm not going to add vibrance because you add, vi you know, you add vibrance and it really darkens the blues. Well, you could, you could add vibrance, a little tin there. Uh, so let's go down to the color mixer. And uh, we could uh, see if there's any reds in there. It doesn't look like there's any reds in there, but there's oranges in there. Look, we can kind of control the oranges. We can work on the yellows. I don't think there's any greens. We can do the blues. Probably no purples or magentas. So there's the before and there's the after. So look at the difference. It's just fine tuning that a little bit. Hit okay. And, you know, we're basically done. Again, we could put a, uh, Make it glow. Let's do that. Hit the actions button and click make it glow and then hit the play. And this pops up. Believe it or not, making it glow, you've, you've got to blur things to create the glow. So then just hit OK. And there's the make it glow. There's the eyeball on and there's the eyeball off. So look, you just create it an artistic look. How about that? But see, you could go into the opacity and you could dial that down because maybe you want to be subtle. You don't uh, want to be that bold on it. So maybe dial it down into the 35, 40% range. Click the eyeball on and off and you can see how subtle you want to be. Maybe you, you know, maybe you want to be in the 60% range. So boom, there's your make it glow that kind of put that finishing touch on it. But again, we said, hey, there's uh, our little uh, linear contrast. So again, you can come up to the actions panel, come down here to linear contrast, click on it, hit the play button, and that pops it on. So you can see how the linear contrast just gives it that little, extra black in there that kind of creates that, I don't know, better look, I think, anyways. But again, you can fine tune it with the opacity. Suppose you only want to have about 75%.
Okay, so that's it for uh, for that image. I don't know. Do you guys want to do one more or do you want to quit? <laughs> Oh, well, you, what do you want? I don't know. I think people can just quit if they don't have enough time, but um, it's up to you, Larry, if you... Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could watch all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's, um, let's just take one more. Okay. And, okay, so let's see. Um, uh okay so oh yes okay so well i kind of wanted to show you this uh, we we haven't talked about cleaning up the images yet uh so let's let's look at this um okay okay so here's an image i just took a few days ago uh, over at Huntington Central Library. Okay, so you look at this image and you say, oh, wow, you just caught that bird sitting on that rock. Look how great that was, how easy that was. No, that's what the image looked like. <laughs> that's what I started with. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so you see it was really dark in there. And uh, let's just see, what is, what's the, uh, okay, so, Oh, oh, shoot. Didn't, oh, yeah, the ISO is uh, 12,800 was the ISO. 12,800. Okay, so you can see how much Topaz cleaned that up. Topaz denoise. Cleaned it up beautifully. But you see all of the work you have to do in cleanup, either using... Uh, Content aware fill, uh, you know, your spot healing brush or your clone stamp tool. Okay, now here's another image. You'd say, oh, wow, just caught that bird sitting on that log. No, that's what it looked like. <laughs> okay, now obviously I had cropped it in and got most of the junk out of there, but still, you got to do some cleanup and you know you're only going to do the cleanup if it's it's an image that's worth it mm -hmm. and but if you want to move and be an artist uh, you know th then you've got to do this you know it's just it just has to be done okay so um let's see Let's see which one we're going to work on. Okay, so we'll take this image. Now, I started with this image. Again, this was on the field trip uh, to Crystal Coast State Park. And uh, so we turned it into this image. Now, I'm not going to probably be able to duplicate this <laughs> because, as I say, when you start working on stuff, it is really, really hard to... Uh, to duplicate it properly, but but I wanted just to show you a little bit of the cleanup. Okay, so um, we'll work through this real quickly, and uh, so again, we'll open up the shadows, uh, maybe bring down the highlights a little bit, put some texture in, a little clarity. A little dehaze, some vibrance, and we'll change the uh, we'll change this to uh, landscape. And uh, I've already have my sharpening and whatnot set to zero, so I'll just open this up. Okay, so now 
And this, this is one of the things that bugs me. I see so many people show images without straightening the horizon. <laughs> you have got to straighten the horizon. Uh, because, I mean, that is that just shows uh, that you're... Uh, you're a beginner. <laughs> so get that horizon, come over here to straighten and just quickly straighten your horizon. It's pretty easy to do. Do your content aware and hit OK. Get that horizon straightened. Don't submit images with a crooked horizon, please. OK, so suppose we want to get rid of this guy here. Okay, so you know, obviously, spot healing brush. There's the clone stamp tool. I've been using the content aware fill that really applies artificial intelligence. And I don't know how many of you really know that exists. So I'll go over it real quickly. You grab the lasso tool here, and we'll come and we'll just oh, tell you what. First of all, we better just blow this guy up. <laughs> Get him big. Okay, so we can see them. Okay, so come with your lasso tool and just kind of circle around the guy. You don't have to be that precise to circle around them. Okay, now you go over here to edit and down to content aware fill. Click on that and this pops up. Okay. So notice that this is in green and that's what Photoshop is using to fill in the area that you circled, okay? And on the right here, it's already filled it in, like in two seconds, look at that. There, he's gone. <laughs> so it, it's amazing the way this works. 90% of the time, it usually works really well. But of course, I'll show you an example where it doesn't. Okay, so this is what Photoshop picked. And we'll just hit okay. And you can see he's gone, perfect. But do, do you notice how this is already filled in and it looks pretty mm. sharp if, if you use the spot healing brush a lot of this would be blurry mm. and that's what's so great about this content aware fill in the edits menu okay so obviously you got to hit control d to deselect okay so uh now I, i'm going to get rid of this rock here so again Pick the lasso tool and just go around this rock. And uh, we'll blow that up a little bit here. And then come over here to edit, content aware fill. And again, you see uh, Photoshop over here on the right. Did not do a great job. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you can see here that this is the green that was picked. Okay, now you can try to improve this by saying, hey, we don't want any sand picked. Mm -hmm. So you see this is on subtract. So you just pull, you just paint over this and it takes out the grass, I mean the sand. Okay, we want to take out, let's say this rock here. Okay and then let go of the mouse and see if it improves it. Well, it improved it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just hit okay. Okay, so that's not a perfect job. I'll do control D to deselect. That's not a perfect job. So you might have to get in there with the clone stamp tool uh, and fix that up a little bit, or you could even try and say, hey, I'll just do the, uh, Content aware fill again and try that. Okay. And then come up, edit, content aware fill. And uh, 
see if it had improved it. And um, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't even tell. Um, again, we can draw this out. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Paint this out and see if it improves it. Okay. And what just said, okay. Okay. Um, so it did not do a good job, a great job. You would have to go in there and, and do the uh, clone stamp tool and fix it up. Okay. But as I say, most of the time it does do a good job. Okay, again, you can come in here now and grab the spot healing brush and you can, you know, take all this stuff out. And this is something you should do. Spend some time, clean up the images. Get rid of the junk. Okay, so uh, again, you could then, you know, crop it and make it into a, you know, a better composition. Again, doing this real fast. Oops, how come it? What's going on here? I missed it. Shoot. Okay. Now I would run this through Topaz Denoise. Uh, but again, uh, just to save time. I'm not going to do that. And uh, so you could look at this image and you could say, well, what, what do I want to do to improve it? Okay, well, we could definitely apply some uh, contrast to it. It looks like it's kind of washed out. So uh, now do we want to apply contrast to the whole image or just part of the image? Okay, so let's say we want to do it to the whole image, okay? First of all, you could come here. If you look here at my layers, which I should have mentioned to you, you see each one of these layers represents something I did here. See, there's that layer. Uh, here's the rock layer. Here's the man layer. See, everything we did was on, is on a layer. <laughs> so, if we say we like that, go ahead and flatten it. So you do your control Q and flatten it. Okay, so now we want to do the uh, contrast. So um, move this back up here, come down here, hit your, your curves. And uh, so I'll come down to the default and I'll pick a medium contrast, let's say. Okay. Come over here to my opacity slider. And let's say I'm just gonna put about 35% on. You hit the eyeball on and off, you can determine whether you like it or not. Okay. So I go, hey man, that, that's looking pretty good. You could do a, a hue saturation. We haven't done one of those. So come down here, hue saturation and uh, we could do, uh, let's say, bump it up about 10. And that's looking okay. So fine, we'll just leave that there. Uh, let's see, what else could we do? Um, well, that's looking okay. So um, let's see what... what what did I want to do? I was going to try to show you something here and I forgot what I was going to show you. Um, oh yeah, dodge and burn. Yeah, that's real important. Dodge and burn is really, really, really important. That's how you make your image and design it so you direct the eye to where you want it to go. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to actions and hit my dodge and burn action hit play and continue. Okay, so I am going to, to dodge. So hit the dodge layer. I'm 
brush is already picked, I'm going to turn that to white. And my opacity, I'm going to hit the one key to make it 10%. And, um, oops, I and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lighten this rock up. Okay, let me make it a little bigger so you can see it. And the more I open up, or I should say keep clicking on the mouse, it puts 10 on top of 10. And you can see, look how much I've already improved it. Opened it up. Okay, I can hit the two. Number two, make the opacity of the brush 20%, come in here, and now hit this real dark area in here. And open that up. Now be careful, don't hit the light areas, just open up the dark area. So look what I've done to that rock. Okay, now let's come over here to these rocks, do the same thing. Okay, stay away from the light areas. I've got this at 20%, just make your brush small and just hit, hit the rocks. You gotta be careful, don't go outside. Uh, because it'll show, so kind of keep it in. See, we're doing this freehand. We're not doing any selections. And so you have to be a little bit more careful when you're doing it freehand. Be because you're using a very soft brush, zero hardness, uh, it's not gonna matter if you go outside a little bit, okay? And just every time you go over it, you're putting 20 on, percent on top of 20 percent so you so it's not going to go wild on you okay so hey that's good enough so what have you done boom look at that look at the difference you just made okay so now suppose we go to the burn layer click on the burn layer change this to black and we can't use a 20% brush, that's too much. So we're gonna use a 5% brush. So go zero five, and we change it to a 5% brush. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna darken my clouds down here in the reflection. And, uh, so maybe I'll just darken the whole thing down here. All right, oh, I should have stayed away from the rocks. I shouldn't have touched the rocks. Okay, so I can go back up to history and uh, click up one on history. You see, and that took off what I just did. So I can close that and I can start again because <laughs> I went over the rocks by mistake. Okay, so let's dark, stay away from the rocks, just darken the bottom here mm -hmm. and uh, darken whatever you want. If you want to darken this a little bit, that's too light, just come over here and darken it. And uh, in fact, you can say, hey, I want to darken the whole sky. You can just go over the sky and darken it because you're using a soft brush, you're okay, okay? So, um, okay, so again, I would sharpen it, but we're gonna skip the sharpening section uh, and I'm gonna go uh, close my group, close the group, and now I'll put a uh, stamp visible, control, alt, shift, E on top, and as I said, normally I would sharpen it, but we'll skip that. And I'm gonna to go to filter, camera raw filter. Okay. And we're gonna do some fine tuning in camera raw filter. Okay, so let's say I bring the highlights down. Uh, do I want to open the shadows? Eh, maybe a touch. Uh, I can add more texture, I can add a little clarity. Uh, vibrance if I wanted to. Uh, okay, color mixer is really cool. So make sure you use that. Now, the reason I use luminance over saturation is luminance kind of, uh, 
oh god how can i describe it i don't know saturation usually overdoes things and it makes the colors darker if you saturate them it makes them darker and sometimes that doesn't look good so if you stick with luminance uh you're changing just kind of the light value i don't know what that really means so don't ask me uh okay so anyways uh suppose you there's a lot of reds in here i think well not so yeah so there's some okay more seems like there's more oranges than reds so you can uh lighten up the oranges yeah okay so let's lighten up the oranges a little bit maybe lighten up the reds a little bit uh a lot of yellows in here so you can darken the yellows or lighten them up a little bit uh i'm sure that sure there's blue so look we can darken the sky we can lighten things up so again you're going to go slow you're going to use your artistic vision and decide what you want i don't think there's any purples uh or magentas there might be okay so there's the there's the before there's the after so look at the difference we just made great okay so hit okay and uh and that's what we've done so um that's what we started with and this is what we've ended up with but again we're not finished we could put a make it glow on top of it uh we could make do a make it pop uh let's just do a make it pop thing okay so um let's do a duplicate layer control j and uh so we'll come down here and uh do a levels or excuse me uh yeah levels okay and move the slider okay so uh, let's say we move it to let's say 240. Okay, so uh, we can kind of hit the eyeball on and off. And uh, so that's making the whole image pop. Let's say we don't want the whole image to pop. We only want parts of it to pop. Okay, we have a mask on here. This mask shows the whole image. Okay. If we do a control I, which is inverse, we have now changed that mask from white to black. So we are hiding the pop. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We're hiding the pop because we've got black over it. It's underneath is still the brightness underneath. But now this gives us the ability to do an adjustment and only brighten the stuff we want to brighten. Okay, so now I get a brush. So I've got my brush chosen. This is black, so I have to paint on the brush on white. White is chosen. Okay, so I'm going to pick about 30%. So hit the number three, and I've changed the brush to 30%. Now, I want to just brighten up the reflection and brighten up the clouds. Every time you pick, you lift the uh, mouse up, you're adding 30 on top of 30. Now that doesn't look like we've done anything. Hit the eyebrow on and off and you can see we have. We've popped both the clouds and the reflection. Okay, again, it's subtle. And that's what we want, subtle. Okay. So uh, now, again, I can finish this up by uh, doing a real quick uh, make it glow. Notice I don't have to do things uh, in any particular order uh, except a few things. Okay. So there's your make it glow. And you can see again that it's changed it and kind of given it a, just a nice feel. If it's too much, take your opacity down to 75, 70, 60, whatever you want. Come up here, hit the action again, choose linear contrast, 
play the action. And uh, again, eyeball on and off. You can see, look, that linear action just kind of gives it that nice depth by adding that little block to it. Gives it that depth. Suppose you only want, let's say, 60%, then just dial it down, and there we're finished. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so Louise, I'm done. <laughs> Well, it was very uh, excellent information. You did a great job. There's a lot to remember, but your worksheet's really helpful. Um, what we should probably quickly talk about is just the follow-up. Um, we are going to need to be doing, uh, you know, Larry has volunteered to come into Clubhouse 4, which we have to do at a time when there are no Saddleback classes in the room, and have it, people bring in their laptops that have questions with whatever project you're working on to get some kind of personal oversight instruction. So how would you like to handle that, Larry? Give them a few days or to, to do some stuff first? Well, uh, you know, I mean, the, the sooner the better, uh, you know, within a week. Um, so, I mean, you have the schedule of the classes. So, uh, right. yeah. Okay. So. so in general, midday, afternoon, give me a time frame and I'll see what we've got. No, I'm free. So okay. whenever, whenever you uh, have the, you know, the the date available or the or the room available, we can do it. Of course, you know, people are taking classes, so uh, so we have to kind of maybe work on a day where uh, it won't interfere with the classes we're taking. You know, so yeah, I've got that schedule. It's uh, you know, I can't tell when people are going to do their homework, but <laughs> <laughs> we could put out a couple of potentials or something. Um, Next week's the first starting of classes, so it starts the technically Monday, but after I've, I've got the schedule, so we'll work on it. Put something out. So meantime, what I'm going to do is, in fact, I'll go ahead and do stop the recording now.